Most people in America are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement having. When I do these audio casts, I'm at the moment seated outside of Starbucks in Champaign, Illinois, and I'm not originally from here. I literally walked here from my state, and I had a little bit of help of about roughly 60 minutes total because I had one couple, really loving and kind, that drove me about 20 miles or 20 minutes, really, so hard to say how long that was. And then I had a gentleman who was headed to work who drove me 40 minutes into Champaign. I did sleep overnight in a cornfield, I think it was, I don't remember, but it was winter time. I had marvelous snow pants on, it was pretty warm, and thankfully, no coyotes were nearby at the time, or other things and other critters in the night that I could be harmed by. But in America, we do have cornfields right over there, and I've several times been here to Starbucks and found some crazy things that I don't think we need under our tables or need near our children or our family or friends when they're here. It might be the reason I'm here tonight, but I've done it two or three times to take care of things that might cause a fright. But upcoming holidays are important to America. And the upcoming holidays that are so important to America are the ones where we feed people. You see, food sensitivities and food rights and food care is really important to American citizens. But the scariness for most traditional, historic, patriotic Americans, old school like me, as I've often been called by some of the black young guys in the community, they call me old school because of how I look with my crazy hair. And openly, as you know, I have none up there. The reality is that we need to be concerned with not only who's moving our food, who's handling our food, who's cooking our food, who's preparing standard meals at our national food chains and altering those recipes without the corporation's knowledge or recognition or permission. But at the same time, we have to be looking at who's handling the destruction or the, what's the word? the throwing away, in simplest of terms, of the food. I've been around a few places where there's somebody actually destroying food that is timed out and treating a watermelon or a pumpkin or something that still might have a little bit of food nutrition for, say, a goose, like I like to feed a lot of times, and they hunt me down. And I have one four-person four uh, goose family. Uh, four guy first, I don't know what you call them, Gosling family, if you will, that are always late to the feeding time. But that's not my point. My point is that they're taking those important pieces of food that are just on the edge or a little mushy instead, and they're playing basketball with them. They're crashing them on the ground. They're crashing them in the garbage cans. And I'm just looking at these young black children or young white men who don't understand the reverence for food.